Hi everyone, my name is Grayson Halstead. I'm the coordinator for the Allied Health Department at Wake Tech Community College. And this session is going to go over our Allied Health Departments as well as nurse aid departments. Again, I'm joined by Diane Cardamon. She's the department head over both of these programs and she will be available to help us answer any questions you may have after the presentation. To get started with, we're gonna look at the nurse aid program. The nurse aid program at Wake Tech has three classes. There's nurse aid one, nurse aid two, and the nurse aid one refresher. So to get started with, we're gonna look at the nurse aid one class. That class is 168 contact hours and it's broken down into three core components. There's lecture in theory, hands-on lab practice, which is done on campus, and then a clinical component done off-site at one of the hospitals or long-term care facilities in the area. Nurse Aid 1 serves primarily as an introduction into patient-centered health care. It goes over topics such as preparing people in those facilities for different procedures and events and doctor's visits and things like that they have going on that day. Um, feeding, mobility, helping get people in and out of wheelchairs to move from you know, point A to point B within their facility, as well as um, you know, basic wound care, as well as things like applying compression stockings and things of that nature. Nurse Aid 2 is a little bit longer than Nurse Aid 1. It's about 175 contact hours. It also has three core components where it has lecture and theory, hands-on lab practice and clinicals. However, unlike Nurse Aid 1, Nurse Aid 2 does require a high school diploma or GED, as well as a valid Nurse Aid 1 cert, um, certification or license in the state of North Carolina as a prerequisite. So unless you are a certified Nurse Aid 1 in North Carolina, and unless you have a high school diploma or GED, you cannot take Nurse Aid 2. You have to get those before taking Nurse Aid 2. The Nurse Aid 1 Refresher is a little bit shorter program, and in order to take that, students must fit one of the three criteria listed here. You must have either a Nurse Aid 1 listing in North Carolina that expired within the last five years, a current or valid Nurse Aid 1 listing from another state, or you must have a Nurse Aid 1 listing from another state that expired within the last five years. If you do not have, um, or if you do not meet one of those three criteria, you will not be able to take the Nurse Aid 1 Refresher class. You will have to take the full Nurse Aid 1 class. Our Nurse Aid 1 Refresher class is about half the length of Nurse Aid 1, and it's more geared towards getting people back up to speed and serving as a refresher, obviously, for Nurse Aid 1, and it really focuses more on the hands-on lab and clinical practice than the other two. Some more specific information regarding the requirements for our Nurse Aid classes. Nurse Aid 1 and Nurse Aid 2 both require a background check, drug screening, CPR certification, and immunization and vaccination list in order to complete the programs. The Nurse Aid 1 refresher, on the other hand, does not require a background check or drug screening. Next up, um, let's take a little bit of time to discuss the cost of these programs. Both Nurse Aid 1 and Nurse Aid 2 cost $250. That's the registration fee which is the cost of the class itself. We just refer to it as a registration fee because it's due at the time of registration and submitting that payment is what finalizes your registration in the class. And then both Nurse Aid 1 and Nurse Aid 2 require a background check and drug screening through Castle Branch, which cost $116. Nurse Aid 1 Refresher, on the other hand, since it's a little bit of a shorter program compared to Nurse Aid 1 and Nurse Aid 2, only cost $150 and no background check or drug screening is required for the Nurse Aid 1 Refresher program. Again, our Nurse Aid classes, they have three core components, the lecture and theory portion, hands-on lab practice, and then clinicals. For the hands-on lab practice, which is done on campus for these programs, they're held at one of the three locations listed here, the Perry Health Sciences Campus, the Northern Wake Campus, or the Public Safety Education Campus. Regarding the formats for our Nurse Aid classes, they are either hybrid, where the lecture and theory portion is done online, and then you would come into campus for the hands-on lab practice, and then you would go to clinicals at the designated clinical location for that class, or we do offer some seated Nurse Aid classes and seated Nurse Aid classes 
are 100% on campus in person. They do not have an online component. Unfortunately, we cannot offer 100% online nurse aid classes because the state of North Carolina requires the hands on lab practice and clinicals, which can't be done virtually. So we can only offer hybrid or seated formats for these classes. For more information about our nurse aid program, you can visit the Wake Tech homepage, which is www.waketech.edu. Once you're there on the homepage, up at the top of the screen above the Wake Tech Torch logo, there's a search bar and you can just type in nurse aid and hit enter there. That'll give you search results and you can specifically click on nurse aid one or nurse aid two, depending on which one is applicable to your interest. Once you do that and you're looking at the web page for the specific nurse aid one or nurse aid two program, we post the full syllabus for the program, the immunization and background check requirements and links for more information to submit that information there, as well as the schedule of all of our upcoming classes. We highly, highly encourage all students who are interested in registering for nurse aid classes to read all of that information before registering for a class. That way you understand what type of information will be expected from you, when it is due and so on. That way we can make sure everyone has the same expectations and everything gets submitted on time so you can be successful in the class. For each of the classes, when you are looking at the list of available classes to the left of each section number, there's a little button that says details. You can click on that and it will give you a drop down box that will show you the specific course schedule, the days of the week and times the class is scheduled to meet the clinical site and so on. So please double check all of that information so you understand the schedule and location requirements for your class. And then here we have the nurse aid department's contact information. If you have any questions after our presentation tonight, you can either call or email the nurse aid department and we will be happy to assist you and answer any questions you have. The nurse aid information phone line is 919-747-0120. And the nurse aid information email address is nurseaid at waketech.edu. Alternatively, if you need to view the schedule of upcoming classes, syllabus, background check information, and things like that, you can just go into your favorite web, web browser and type in nurseaid.waketech.edu. That will also take you to the nurse aid homepage on our website. You can click on Nurse Aid 1, Nurse Aid 2, whatever you're interested in, and it will give you all of that information there as well. Now that we've discussed the Nurse Aid program, we're going to take some time to discuss the Allied Health Department and the classes it offers. So we're going to start with that information by looking at the general formats for the Allied Health Department's classes. In general, these are short term classes designed to help lead people to professional certifications and entry level employment in a given healthcare field. On average, our classes are between 48 and 128 contact hours, and that normally spans between one and four months, depending on the class. The specific class length can fluctuate a little bit from class to class, depending on things like holidays, lab schedules and things of that nature. As a general rule of thumb, Allied Health Department classes will cost between $125 and $200 per class plus textbooks. And overall, the overwhelming majority of the Allied Health Department's classes are online, but there are a few exceptions. For example, EKG is a hybrid class as well as sterile processing because they both have required in-person lab training similar to nurse aid so that you can have hands-on practice for, in the case of EKG, placing EKG leads on patients, administering EKG tests, providing initial readings of the EKG results and things like that. And sterile processing has hands on lab practice to practice using sterilization equipment such as autoclaves and wash basins, manually and visually inspecting surgical instruments, helping to organize and repackage them after sterilization and inspection, as well as the organization and logistical um, components and programs used by sterile processing facilities. Now we're going to take some time to look more specifically at some of our more popular allied health programs. First off, we're going to look at medical terminology. The course code is NUR3235E3. That primarily serves as a prerequisite for our healthcare billing and coding program, though it does articulate into MED 121 and 122 for some of our degree programs offered at Wake Tech, such as the medical assistant program. 
Next, we have healthcare billing encoding part one, which is MED 3030B3, and healthcare billing encoding part two, which is MED 3030W3. These are obviously are for healthcare billing encoding, and they specifically are designed to help prepare students for two professional certifications. There's the American Medical Billing Association Certified Medical Reimbursement Specialist Exam, which is for billing, and the American Academy of Professional Coders Certified Professional Coder Exam, which is a nationally recognized certification for coding. Next, there's Cardiovascular Technician Monitor, that's ICV3111B3. That's our EKG program that's hybrid, which we just mentioned, and that class will help prepare students for either the NHA's CET exam or Cardiovascular Credentialing International CCT certification exam. The same class will help equally prepare students for either one of those certifications. That so you can... I'm sorry, were there questions? Okay, sorry about that. Um, but our EKG program will help prepare students for either the NHA or CCI exam. Then there is Central Sterile Processing Technician, um, that's MED 3002A3, and that is specifically designed to help prepare students for the CVSPD's Sterile Technician Certification Exam. We also offer Healthcare Clinical Research Specialist, that's CTR 3001A3, and Monitoring Clinical Trials, which is CTR 3001B3. Both of those programs are designed to help prepare students for the Society of Clinical Research Associates certification exam. However, that exam does require either an upper level degree, such as a bachelor's or master's degree in clinical research or a related field, or two years of professional work experience before you can take that certification exam. But we offer healthcare clinical research specialists as an introduction into the clinical research field. So we'll go over topics such as collecting and analyzing clinical research data, how clinical trials are structured, and some of the ethical and legal constraints surrounding clinical research trials. Monitoring clinical trials, on the other hand, picks up where clinical research specialists left off, and it is more geared towards supervising and managing clinical research trials. We do also offer a Certified Professional Coder Exam Review Class, that's MED 3030X3. That is a completely optional class within our Healthcare Billing and Coding Program that's designed to be additional prep and practice for the CPC exam. Again, that class is completely optional and it lasts about a month and a half. So if you do take our Healthcare Billing and Coding Program and want some more practice before taking the AAPC certification exam, you can take our Certified Professional Coder Exam Review Class. The other big program we're looking forward to is the Surgical Technologist Program that's currently in the final stages of development and we plan to offer it to the public in late 2021 or early 2022. And that will help prepare students for the NCCT's Surgical Technologist exam. And that course is going to go over how to prepare operating rooms for surgical procedures, how to support medical staff during operations and surgical procedures, as well as how to advocate for and promote patient well-being during those procedures. So that's a broad overview of some of our more popular programs within the Allied Health Department, but I'd like to take a little bit of time to dive more in depth into some of our specific programs that have a few additional requirements. So first off is our healthcare billing and coding program. That program has three required classes. There's medical terminology, which is a prerequisite. And please keep in mind that needs to be the NUR3235E3 version medical terminology. Wake Tech does offer some other medical terminology classes through Career Step and Education to Go. Those classes are not accepted as the prerequisite because those are significantly shorter than the NUR3235E3 sections of medical terminology. So if you're interested in billing and coding, Please keep in mind that for the prerequisite, only the NUR3235E3 sections of medical terminology will suffice for the prerequisite. And then there's healthcare billing and coding part one and part two. We've broken it down into part one and part two because healthcare billing and coding part one covers billing, whereas healthcare billing and coding part two covers coding. So we've broken them down into discrete separate classes. For those that are interested in that program, we highly, highly recommend taking these classes one at a time 
So once you complete medical terminology, you can then take and complete healthcare billing and coding part one. And then after you complete part one, you can take healthcare billing and coding part two. And the reason we do that is because a lot of the information covered in healthcare billing and coding part one, for example, lays a lot of the informational foundation for healthcare billing and coding part two. And again, um, for those that want additional practice for the CPC exam, we do offer a CPC exam review class, but it's 100% optional. Then there's uh, our healthcare clinical research and monitoring clinical trials classes. So we touched on this a little bit earlier, but just to reiterate, both of those classes do award Wake Tech completion certificates. However, in order to take the certification exam through the Society of Clinical Research Associates, you will need to either have an upper level degree, such as a bachelor or master's in clinical research or a related field, or have two years of professional experience before you can take that certification exam. And just like how medical terminology is a prerequisite for our healthcare billing and coding program, healthcare clinical research specialist is a prerequisite for our monitoring clinical trials program. Next, I'd like to discuss how you can register for allied health department classes. The easiest way to do it is online through Wake Tech's website, which is www.waketech.edu. And you can find our classes by clicking the non-degree programs um, tile, which on the Wake Tech homepage is a purple tile near the center of the screen. Once you click on that purple tile, it will give you a search bar down near the middle of the screen again, where you can type in either the course codes or the course title, and then select search for a course, and it will show you the course title, which you can then click on to show you a list of all of the available classes as well as how many seats are available in those specific classes. And it will also show you the start and end dates for the specific classes so you can find one that fits your schedule the best. And just like for nurse aid to the left of the section number for our specific classes, there's a button that says details, which you can click on to see a drop down box of the abbreviated course description, required textbooks, specific course schedule for classes like EKG and sterile processing, which have lab meetings and the contact information for the department should be listed there as well. Now, regarding the schedule for the online allied health department classes, they're administered via a platform called Moodle. That's a online learning platform. It's not a program that you have to buy. Instead, it functions more like a website that you log into where it will show you your available class that you are registered for. And then once you click on it, it will show you the activities for your class. You're automatically added to Moodle once you register for the class. So on the first day of class, you will log into Moodle and it, then it will show you all the information you need to get started in the class. Our instructors also send out welcome emails a few days before the class starts with information about how to log on and access the class in Moodle, as well as just some general information to help get you prepared for the start of class. Now, with that being said, the way the schedules progress for our online allied health department classes is they move on a week by week basis. So at the beginning of each week, you will get all of the assignments, readings to complete in your textbook, um, graded activities such as exams and quizzes, discussion forms and things like that. Those will all show for the given week at the beginning of that week. Our online classes do not have live video or lecture schedules, so there's not a specific time that you have to be logged in each day. We do that to help promote flexibility for students because we understand people have professional family obligations. They have other classes that do have set schedules they need to attend to. So we try and have a little bit of flexibility to help accommodate students and promote their success as much as we can. So on a given week, you can log in, for example, on Monday night after dinner. You can log in and work for a little bit the next day on a lunch break, couple hours you know, on a Saturday morning what have you, as long as you're taking care of all of your assignments, discussion forums, and graded activities. That being said, graded assignments such as exams and quizzes will have deadlines, such as you know, Sunday night at midnight, for example. So you can submit that assignment before the deadline, you know, if you wanna work on it early in Sunday or Saturday night or what have you, but if you don't get a turn in by that deadline, you don't submit the assignment and you won't get a grade for it, or you know, you'll get a zero, so please keep that in mind for graded assignments. All of our online allied health classes are limited to 20 students per class, and they all also have a dedicated instructor assigned to them. 
Um, and basically the reason we do that is to keep the class size manageable for the instructors so they can provide good feedback, they can grade assignments in a timely manner, support the class and promote discussion as much as possible. So now that we've looked at both the nurse aid and allied health department classes and given you an overview of them, we'd like to take some time to address some of the frequently asked questions we get. So one of the ones we get is, can I test out of the nurse aid one exam or challenge the exam without having taken a nurse aid one class? Unfortunately, the answer to that is no. The state requires that before students can take the nurse aid one certification exam, they must complete the nurse aid one course. Another common question we get is, can I opt out of the medical terminology prerequisite for healthcare billing and coding? Possibly. So if you have completed a comparable medical terminology class within the last five years that, and by comparable, we mean a class that is similar in length. So 128 contact hours or thereabouts and covers a similar curriculum and material to the nurse or the medical terminology class my department offers you may qualify to opt out of that medical terminology prerequisite. And alternatively, we do offer a challenge exam. So for example, if it's been more than five years since you took a medical terminology class from another institution, you can take our challenge exam. And if you score 80% or higher on it, we will allow you to opt out of that prerequisite. We also are often asked how often we run classes. For both nurse aid and allied health department classes, because they are not part of degree programs, they do not follow a semester to semester type schedule. That gives us a lot of flexibility to schedule classes, so we offer them on a year round basis. For both nurse aid and allied health, we try to schedule classes as evenly apart as possible and as regularly as possible so students can better plan for what class they want to take and when they want to take it. We are also often asked if there's a seat limit or maximum capacity for our classes. And the answer to that is yes. Most of our classes have a limit of 20 students, again, to keep things as manageable as possible and promote good student to student interaction and student instructor interaction. So, because we want to make sure that it's not just a self paced online class, we want to really have a lot of interaction and discussion to promote learning and student success. Students also often have questions about refunds. And yes, refunds can be available as long as you submit your withdrawal and refund request before a class starts for a full refund. So for any reason, if you need to withdraw from a class, we understand as long as you submit an electronic withdrawal request before the class starts, you're entitled to a 100% refund of the class registration fee. And then if you submit your refund request after the start of the class, but before the census date, you are entitled to a 75% refund of the registration fee. And again, we do that online, so you can just submit your request there. We will process it, send it to the registrar's office, and then they will mail you a refund check. Regarding financial aid, financial aid can be available through the Career Pathways program, but please understand that because these are non-degree programs, federal financial aid like the FAFSA is not accepted for nurse aid or allied health classes. Um, like I said, we do have a... Sorry, please excuse me there. Um, we do offer um there is financial aid potentially available through the career pathways program they manage financial aid and sponsorships specifically for non-degree programs and their information can be found or you can email them for more information at choose my path at waketech.edu you can send them an email tell them what class you're interested in they will um, collect information from you let you know if you qualify for sponsorship or financial aid and then if you do, they will directly assist you with the registration process, as well as some information sessions to get you all the information you need regarding your sponsorship and the class you are registering for. And then finally, we are often asked, are certifications included in these classes? With the exception of Nurse Aid 2, professional certifications are not included in our classes. You would register for and take the certification exams after completing the class with the exam provider. Again, the exception for that is Nurse Aid 2. If you take that class and complete it on the last night of the class, you will be a registered Nurse Aid 2 in the state of North Carolina. Everything else you register for and take the certification exam with the um, certification provider, not through Wake Tech. 
And then finally, again, here is the contact information for both the Allied Health and Nurse Aid Departments. For Allied Health, our general information phone line is 919-747-0140. And the information email address is wcemedicalcertifications at waketech.edu. For Nurse Aid, the information phone line is 919-747-0120. And the information email address for nurse aid is nurseaid at waketech.edu. And again, if you need um, to view the syllabus and paperwork requirements for nurse aid, as well as the schedule of upcoming classes, you can search for it on our website, which is waketech.edu, or you can just simply type in nurseaid.waketech.edu. And that will take you to the nurse aid homepage as well, where you can view all of that information. So that concludes our presentation of the nurse aid department and allied health department classes. So we do have some time, so we are happy to answer any questions you may have, which you can enter into the chat and we'll be happy to answer them and assist you with anything you need. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you so much for your time. We really, really appreciate it and are thrilled to have you with us. Okay, so we have a question about how will nurse aid one CCP course for fall 21 operate as far as time and hands on. And that's from Michael Terrell. Okay. Uh, this is Diane Cardamone, and I will answer that question. Uh, our CCP classes are exactly like the CE classes that Grayson has just described. The theory is online uh, through uh, Blackboard, and the students will come in to do lab on campus and then we'll go to the clinical sites for clinical. Those classes are we offer that either as a Monday Wednesday from 530 to 930 on public safety education campus or Monday and Thursday evenings from 530 to 930 on our north campus. Thank you Diane. We have another question from Libby Hardwick. Um, are you scheduling nurse aid to classes yet? Not at this point because of COVID. Those classes, we are not approved to teach that as a hybrid or a blended class. Therefore, it has to be 100% seated. And the demand for NA2 is minimal as compared to the demand for NA1. Thank you, Diane. Do we have any other questions? Again, I did want to uh, reiterate that uh, there are um, scholarship assistance um, programs available through our career pathways program. Uh, we do have uh, the Wake Works Propel scholarship program again also that I know is um, joined with that and there is a session for that later this evening if you all would like to join that to learn more about that offering as well if you do need scholarship assistance. Um, any other questions feel free to ask in the chat and we'll be here to just answer those. Um, are there any requirements for the CPR certification? And that question is being asked by Michael Terrell as well. Uh, yes, it must be the Amer uh, American Heart Association uh, BLS, basic life support. I mean, yeah, must be AHA BLS. Thank you, Diane. So again, if you do have any questions, just please place those in the chat. We'll be here to answer those questions for you. And thank you again for joining us this evening. All right, well, if we don't have any questions or anything, certainly the contact information is on your screen um, for both Allied Health, their email address and phone number, as well as the nurse aid um, phone number and email address. And if we can help with anything further, certainly do reach out to us and we thank you for joining us this evening. Everyone have a great evening. Thank you all so much for joining us. It was a thrill discussing our programs with you and we're happy you joined us.